there'd be no harm in giving us a look at that stuff. In the meantime, let's take a look around, shall we? The shallow but lethal incisions across this female victim's throat. Ah, I hate being cut off like that. So these are the personal effects of Sarah Carraway that were sent by its Lestrade over to the morgue. Let's take a look, shall we? A small contact a small compact tin of Morley's number eight facial talk with a cotton wool applicator. A large iron key of the type usually associated with locks on iron doors or sturdy external doors. A charm bracelet. A delicate gold chain to which is attached a semi-precious violet stone. It appears to be an amethyst, perhaps indicates that the victim was born between January 20th and February 18th. A handsome crimson handkerchief made of Japanese silk. Huh. Let's see if we can grab this. I know it's unusual procedure, but, you know, I think Lestrade may have told this guy that we're on the case, right? I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. But I can't allow you to take anything without proper authorization. Huh. Great. I need to run a few more tests on these items while I have them here, Mr. Holmes. You are welcome to take a look at them. Whenever I want to. Let's see anything else, he might say. Have you learned anything more about of the circumstances surrounding Miss Carraway's death? Not really, Mr. Holmes. I did discover a trace quantity of a curious powdery substance on her coat. It doesn't look like a cosmetic powder. My laboratory assistant won't be in until tomorrow, so it hasn't been analyzed. Would you like to see a sample of it? Indeed, I would. Ah, yes. This looks just like the specimen I removed from the body at the murder scene. My analysis showed that it had arsenic in it. Yeah, sorry. That's a peculiar combination. I can tell you that arsenic had nothing to do with the cause of death. Thank you, Doctor. Who's this guy right here? Oh, it's you, Holmes. Hello, Inspector. Yes, Holmes, what can I do for you? Inspector, could you authorize the release of some of... The items in, from the Sarah Carraway case? The Carraway case? Who's investigating that one, Holmes? Inspector Lestrade was doing some of the preliminary work. Oh, you mean the new Ripper case? Lestrade always gets the glamour assignments. I get what falls off his plate. I'm here on a simple suicide. Three witnesses saw this woman leap off London Bridge a week ago. Clearly a suicide. I'm just tying up loose ends. Excuse me, Inspector, concerning those caraway items? Uh, oh, yes, sorry. I'm afraid I won't be able to help you, Mr. Holmes. Only Lestrade can release that evidence. I left, uh, I left him an hour ago at the yard. You might still find him there. I must warn you, though, that security procedures have tightened up some. Tell them I sent you, and you should have no trouble. Watson? What a remarkable odor, Watson. Some professional guidance, please. Can the stink of carbolic acid be harmful to one's health? Not really, Holmes. This area has must be disinfected regularly. Someone sloshes it everywhere several times a day. You'll be accustomed to the smell in a moment or two. <sighs> being in a chemistry lab, I know what that smells like. Actually, being in an anatomy lab, I know what it smells like, too. Gruesome dead body number one. This unfortunate young woman bled to death from deep stab wounds inflicted in her throat and upper chest. The fatal blade may have resembled the one reputed to be wielded by Jack the Ripper. Ooh, Jack the Ripper. All right. Let's go out and see if we can find Lestrade. And look what popped up. Scotland Yard. 
Let's head over to that famous police station and see if we can't bug Lestrade into giving us something. And just walk right in. Let's do it. Sorry, sir. My orders are to let no one pass without proper authorization. Good day, Constable. I must speak with Inspector Lestrade. Sorry, sir. What with all the recent troubles, we've had to restrict access to the building. Authorized personnel only, I'm afraid. But this is Sherlock Holmes, the most famous consulting detective. That's nothing to me, sir. No exceptions. Please move on. Ah, yes. Inspector Gregson informed us of several recent changes in security procedures. But I assure you, Constable, he has given us permission to enter. That may be, sir, but I take orders from Chief Inspector Palmer himself, and they are, they are that no one is to pass without proper authorization. You understand, sir? <sighs> about this guy? Why is he called an apparently blind vendor? Hello, Ogi. My compliments to you. Very kind, Mr. Holmes. Nice to hear from you and Dr. Watson again. Is there any? Is there perhaps something I can help you with? I need to speak with Inspector Lestrade, and the constable won't allow me access to the building. Ah, real sticklers for regulations, the yard boys are. Mr. Holmes, sorry. I can't help you with that one. Why is it that he can't help me? What is it about him? Augie, the apple sale seller, has worked this stall for more than a decade. He is a bot he is a bottomless, though expensive, source of confidential information concerning police business. The constabulatory constabulary, sorry, tolerates his presence because he is not above playing both sides of the street. Many times the police have nabbed their man because of one of Augie's tips. So he's a snitch. Regardless, we might need to talk to talk to some police officer. The only police officer that I remember seeing recently was at the morgue. Maybe Inspector Gregson's still there. Perhaps I can talk to him. Have him send a message, as it were, to Lestrade to have him come outside and meet me. Oh, it's you, Holmes. I regret to inform you, Inspector, that your name alone is insufficient for purposes of circumventing the Yard's security procedures. What? Of all the incumbent. Come along, Holmes. We'll get this sorted immediately. Well? Come along, Mr. Holmes. You too, Dr. Watson. I, uh, I need some papers from the Yard anyway. We'll get you in to see Lestrade, and then I will return here. And now the slow walking. This should only take a moment, Holmes. What seems to be the problem here, in Constable? No problem here. Truth is, it's been pretty quiet. Quiet, eh? If you'd like to keep it that way, Constable, then I suggest you allow Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson to enter immediately. But, sir, my orders are... I'm well aware of your orders, Constable. Allow them entrance on my authority. I'll assume responsibility for Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Very well, sir. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, you may consider yourselves authorized personnel. You may enter whenever you wish. Much obliged, Constable, and thank you, Inspector. Think nothing, nothing of it, Holmes. We live to serve. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some matters to attend to. Wait, what, what happened to those papers that he said he was supposed to get? Good day, Constable. It is indeed, Mr. Holmes. Okay, we're in the yard. There's Lestrade. The inspector is hip-deep in paperwork, the never-ending scourge of a policeman's duty. He is oblivious to everything else around him. 